Dear Akoti, my sister, welcome to another video, another womanhood video. Um, today specifically we're going to be talking about the masculine roles more specifically and then in the next video we're going to go a little bit deeper into the feminine roles and um, the feminine role versus the working wife, so the stay-at-home wife versus the working wife and yada yada yada. But today we're going to focus on our men and how we can be um, better help meets for them and helping them to get to their goals because as we learned in the submission video yesterday um, part of submission is really seeing that person as yourself for one and also helping that person to get to their end goal and so obviously the end goal for your husband um, would be for him to be able to fulfill his masculine role so what can you do to really get him to that end goal so we're going to talk more about that today, actually. And as always, I have my notes. So if I'm looking down, remember, it's because I want to stay on topic because I can ramble. So um, before we dive in, as always, let me turn my brightness down. It's like, whoa. Um, so as always, there is a Facebook group for the Dear Akoti YouTube channel um, where we're really able to discuss things, we're able to encourage each other, we're able to teach each other things that maybe we don't know. And it's really awesome to just see the group begin to flourish, to see some of you like finally coming out of your shells and like not being afraid to post things. And we have live videos. I didn't do one last week and I'm hopefully going to be able to do one tomorrow. Um, my goal is to be able to is going to try to be able to do one at least every Saturday, um, if not at least once a week. Um, but yeah, so it's really just a great way for us to be able to come together and all of us be able to post and not just me and then you comment. So link for that is down below. And then um, just so you know, if you're new, hello there, I'm Shanae. Welcome to Dear Koti. Um, if you are new, so you always know who I'm referring to because these are the names that I always use in every single one of my videos and so I always preface each video by saying when I say the name Yah or Yahuwah, I'm referring to our Father, our Creator, our God, our Elohim. He goes by many titles. And then for the Messiah, I will refer to him by his Hebrew name of Yahusha whenever I refer to either or, just so you know who I'm referring to. So Yahusha is our Messiah. Yah or Yahuwah is our Father, our God, our Creator, our Elohim, our everything. Okay? Awesome. So let's talk feminine versus masculine roles. So the men's role is primarily four four things so you have the head of the household the earthly guide because we know we have a heavenly guide our earthly provider and our earthly protector and then as a woman we have the titles of being a wife or a really awesome companion to our husbands a mother or the loving teacher and guide of the children an excellent homemaker and a family organizer so the masculine and feminine roles as we clearly defined in the last um well in earlier just two seconds ago are not just a result of custom or tradition it's actually from divine origin from directly from Yahuwah. So it was Yahuwah actually placed man at the head of the family when he told Eve in Genesis 3.16, thy desire shall be unto thy husband and he shall rule over thee. There's also some deeper meanings behind that and we cover that in the womanhood blog post on the website. So I'll be sure to link the website below um, as well so you can check out the website and be able to check out all those blog posts. But there's definitely more meaning than just um, Yah putting that divine order back into place because we learn um, and that's actually in a video we're going to talk about a little bit today for the spiritual womanhood video but when Adam and Eve fell Eve actually reversed the order of things and so she actually put herself as the head and Adam followed after her and so Yah was actually putting that divine order back into place he wasn't creating a new divine order it was always supposed to be that way um, and he was just putting it back into order. And so we see that in Genesis 3.16. And so the man was also designed to be the protector. And we learn this also with the womanhood blog post that I mentioned below in the link. Um, Adam was created, he wasn't even, he, he was built, not built, he was formed under pressure outside of the protection of the garden so he was formed outside of the garden in the chaos of the world under pressure and that's because he's given a different role than a woman is given the woman was actually fashioned or built in the garden of eden within the protection of the garden and so it just really goes to show you that 
Though we are equal beings, man and woman are equal, we have different roles and different specifications and different talents and gifts that we've been giving by Yah so that we can come together in harmony and be able to work together to really um, fulfill whatever will it is that Yah has for us on this earth. So, um, so the man was also designed to be the protector. He was built stronger with greater physical endurance and manly courage. Um, oops, sorry about that. In addition, he commanded man to earn the living when he said in Genesis 3.19, In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return to the ground. So the instruction was given to the man, not to the woman. We see specifically in this verse that Yah is speaking to Adam. He's not speaking to Eve or the woman at the time because she hadn't been named yet. So the woman was given a different assignment, that of a help me, a mother, and a homemaker. So the word help me, meaning the role of the wife as she helps her man get to his goal. And again, we talked about that in the submission video. So I definitely suggest you go check that one out. It is the role of the wife as she offers understanding, encouragement, support, and sometimes help. Since she's biologically created to bear children, her role as a mother is unquestioned. It's kind of like a duh, you know, you can have kids, so clearly you're a mother. Her, role, her homemaking role is assumed. She must nurture her young to run and run the household to free her husband to function as the provider. And we see this in Genesis 2.18 where Yah says, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make a help meet for him. So uh, we also, again, I know I'm shouting out the womanhood posts a lot, but those posts definitely cover a lot. I'm debating on taking those audios and then just putting them to some sort of um, image or something so that I can at least upload them to YouTube for you guys to watch if you'd prefer to watch it that way. But let me know if that's something that you would like for me to do. But there's a downloadable audio and a written portion available and we really go like deep into the creation of man and woman in the fall and you know what a help meet means and breaking it down in the Hebrew and there's so much meaning to it and you will be just so awakened to the truth as far as you will you will feel it. You'll feel a sense of change within yourself because you'll begin to view yourself differently. So I really, really do suggest that you go and take a look at those blog posts. Again, I'll link them down below um, for you. So the masculine and feminine roles are different in function, but equal in importance. Henry A. Bowman compares the partnership of marriage to a lock and key. And I really, 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 really love what he had to say. So this is what he said. He said, together they can accomplish something that neither alone, acting alone can accomplish, nor can it be accomplished by two locks or two keys. Each is distinct, yet neither is complete in and of itself. Their roles are neither identical nor interchangeable. Neither is superior to the other since both are necessary. They're equally important. Each must be judged in terms of its own function. They're complementary. If that's not the most beautiful description of marriage and of partnership and of the woman being the helpmeet and the man, you know, it being a cyclical relationship like we learned with Ephesians 5.21 where it says that we should submit to each other and that it's not just a one-sided thing. It's a cyclical thing. You know, that... Oh, that quote right there just blew me away. So the design of the human family is based on a division of labor. So actually, modern research has proven that the ancient plan of Yahuwah, so the plan of him giving specific roles to the man and the woman, has been proven to work best. So in the 1970s, there were several industries in America that joined forces to research um, the best system for people to work together in groups, especially to get along with one another without any kind of tension or issues. And so part of the study took place in hippie communes or hippie communities or villages, which had begun in the earlier 60s. These idealistic groups were not based on a division of labor, but on equality, much like the feminist idea we have today. Men and women shared equally in all of their chores, so women worked side by side with the men in the fields and building shelters, and the men also shared household chores and the care of the children. So this is a discovery that they had, and I found this really interesting. They found that equality didn't fit the masculine and feminine differences. They found that women were better at some jobs and men at others, and that women's hands were actually more delicately formed and were better for mending and sewing buttons, while the men were more capable of hauling and shoveling materials. 
The most significant discovery, however, was that when they actually shared the work equally, they didn't get along very well with each other. There was tension, hostility, and even hatred between them. And such issues, such problematic issues, caused the whole community to fall apart. Crazy. So the conclusion was that the best way to work in groups is by a division of labor. And this goes right back to the plan that Yah himself put into place of, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Follow what Yah's plan is. You know what I'm saying? So the greatest success in, in marriage occurs when the husband and the wife are devoted to their respective roles. On the other hand, the greatest issues in a marriage occur when either of them e fails to perform their duties or when one oversteps their boundaries and forcefully takes the other partner's role or shows an anxious kind of concern or for, per for their performance or the lack of their performance. So to succeed in your role as a woman, as a wife, in your four feminine roles and accept your womanly duties with a keen sense of responsibility, you have to let it be your concern and your worry, your role, not his role, but yours. You have to let that be your concern. You can, of course, hire people to work for you to fulfill certain things, or you can assign your children different jobs to do, but you have to be the one in charge of making sure it gets done. To further succeed, you have to learn the arts and the skills of being a feminine woman. So that means learning how to cook and clean and manage a household and learning how to be thrifty and how to nurture children and how to, you know, be able to manage your household and know where things are and know where to purchase things and all of that stuff. Um, so you have to be able to forget about yourself and this does not mean that you neglect yourself. This literally means that you become less self-centered and more other-centered. Um, and devote yourself to the welfare and happiness of your family. So let's talk it's with division of labor. These are some of the thoughts that kind of go around in our society today about it. So shouldn't it be based on natural talent or ability? Technically, I guess you can kind of say it that way because there are plenty of women who are really, really good at making a living and there are many men that are very, very good with children. Um, so technically, it's partly true. Another question that often comes up is, well, isn't that just a matter of a custom or a tradition? You know, is it really something we need to follow today? And so to a degree, again, yes, it's technically true. It is part of a custom and tradition. A third question would be, well, isn't it just a matter of sociology? That also has a, a small degree of some truth. All of these ideas ultimately possess a snippet of the truth. However, the reason that these roles are taught as part of this series and part of being a feminine woman is because they come from yeah it's from a divine origin and you know some things it's just like yeah you may think you can do better but yeah honestly knows best he tells us to do certain things and he gives us certain plans and certain ways of doing things and orders of doing things because he knows how things work best Yes, you're going to have the case here and now where you have a man who's really, really, really good with kids and a woman who's really, really, really good at working outside the home. And, you know, those are the small cases. That's like the 20% out of the 100%. And you have the 80%, you know, it's the 80-20 rule where you have the 80% majority that really function best. And then you have the little small pockets here and there who, you know, have different talents, etc. So through divine design, most men were given, again, like we had mentioned, larger and stronger bodies, the ability to endure hard work and great courage. In the Bible, men are clearly given the role of provider from the Garden of Eden and onward. Um, women, by contrast, have a greater fat to muscle ratio, which is more suited in addition to the necessary organs for growing, bearing, and feeding babies. Have, have, we have a greater ability to endure tedious and repetitious work and we have longer patience. In the Bible, we are given the role of being a help me, a mother, and a homekeeper. And you can see this in um, scriptures like Proverbs 31, Genesis 2.18, Genesis 3.16, Titus verse two, three, ver chapter 2, verse 3 through 5, and Ephesians 5.22, verse 24, and verse 33. And then for the men's roles, you can see it in, again, um, Genesis 2.5, well, the last part of it. Um, Genesis 3, 17 through 19, verse 23, Titus chapter 2, verse 2, and then verse 6 through 8, and then Ephesians 5, 25, verse 28, and 33 as well. So to further succeed, 
or to help our husbands succeed in his role, we have to understand that he has three basic masculine needs. So the first one is that he has a need to function in his masculine role as the guide, provider, and protector. He also needs to feel needed in his role, and he also needs to excel women in his role. Not in our role, but his role. So we're gonna dive deeper into all three of those. So let's talk about functioning in his masculine role. So first, he needs to function, just as the head of the family, to have his family honor him and support him in this position. So this means that you're not trying to undermine him, you're not trying to go over him, go over his head, and if he tells your kids that they can't do something, you do it anyway and you tell them they can. You know, it's really teaching your kids that you honor his position and so they should as well, and that you respect his position. Um, second, you need to, he needs to succeed in earning a living and meeting his family's essential needs and to do so independently without the help of others. So this means typically that if you have a perfectly able husband, you should not technically be working according to Yah's plan, according in that, and you going out and working a job is something extra. We're talking about the literal four roles that man and woman have. So we're not talking about anything that's added on extra, okay? Just want to keep that in mind because I'm sure I'm going to get some women in their minds who are thinking, who are you to tell me not to work? I'm not telling you not to work. I'm telling you that that's something extra, extra that you can choose to add on to your basic roles as a woman. But his basic role as a man is to be able to provide for his whole family. And so even if he goes through a time where he's having a harder time as far as maybe his job's not supplying enough income, it is up to him to go find a better job or to work more hours or to find another way to increase his income. And on your part, it's on your part, it's your job to make sure that you're being thrifty and that you're not just wasting money away and that you're making sure that you're doing everything you can on your end to cut down expenses and to really be able to be, again, thrifty. So third, he needs to serve as the protector, sheltering his family from harm, danger, or difficulty. Um, so the second thing that he needs as far as first we said he needs to function in his masculine role. The second is that he needs to actually feel needed in his masculine role. So he needs to feel that his family really needs him as their guide, their protector, and their provider. When a woman becomes capable of providing for herself, able to make her own way in the world, independent of her husband, she actually loses her need for him. And this becomes a great loss to him. And a lot of times too, it can also lead to him becoming dependent on her because then he'll say, well, you know, she's got it. So I don't really have to, I can slack off a little bit. So that's something to be wary of as well. And that's something we're gonna cover in the next video. Um, so, so deep is his need to feel needed as a man and to serve as a man that when he's no longer needed, he may question his reason for living. This can affect his tender feelings for his wife since his romantic feelings partly arise from her need to be protected, sheltered, and cared for. So we talked a little bit about this yesterday in the feminine nature video about how we talked about when you be, when you tend to act more manly, he tends to, his feelings for you tends to lessen because he starts to see you more of in a manly aspect versus as a woman. Um, and it reminds me of a, a movie that I started watching last night and I'm gonna finish today, and it's called The Barefoot Contessa. It's not the TV show on like the Food Network with the Barefoot Contessa cooking recipes. It is a movie from the 50s, and I decided to check it out because I noticed that it went really well with the feminine nature. And one of the things that is mentioned in that movie is men comparing a woman to not being a woman. And so one scene is where you have a director and a writer of a movie named Harry, I believe, and he's talking to a potential actress and this is like the potential actress is what the whole movie centered around and her name is Maria Vegas or Vargas um, and so he's telling her about the different women he's met in, in, in the world in the industry and how he's only fallen in love with three and she was like well what about you know all the other actresses and like she's naming all of these different jobs and he's like well those aren't women and so it was really show, showcasing to you that back then the idea that men had was that a woman was not someone who necessarily worked like a man and brought in the bacon the person that he ended up marrying this man she she did work she was um she had a more like secretarial kind of job where she wasn't like bringing in you know the bacon and you know the primary provider or anything like that he was 
Um, and so he saw her as a woman because she acted like a woman. She was feminine and she held a feminine job. And then I believe when they got married, she didn't hold a job. I don't remember. But um, and then the other women who brought in the money because they were actresses or because they were, you know, big on screen or they had a big role as some of some sort, whether they were in Hollywood or outside of Hollywood, whether they were doctors, writers, directors, whatever. Um, they had become more manly and you could see it in the movie because the women would be sitting at a table drinking alcohol with the men and getting drunk and talking to them like they were their brothers and the men would be turned off and there was even a scene where um you have a woman who con who who gets drunk and she says something to a man and he literally tells her to leave the table he actually slaps her because she says something about she curses god and he takes god very seriously and Anyways, the point is is that he tells her to leave the table because he basically felt like she wasn't being womanly. She wasn't being feminine. And then you see this this woman later on and um, she admits that she's basically given up her, her feminine qualities to become um, basically a tramp is what she calls herself. She literally calls herself a tramp. And so it's just very interesting to see like how back in the 50s these, you know, the people and the people who made these movies had the... Um, the typical idea the traditional idea of what a woman was and that um, like we were talking about in the video yesterday that a woman needs to be feminine in order for a man to really feel needed because if you're feminine you're going to naturally make that man feel as though you need him um, because we do need our men so anyways that ends that second need so he needed to feel needed in his masculine role and he also needs to function in his masculine role and then lastly he needs to excel women in his role so a man is not usually aware of his need to excel some and to excel over a woman until a situation arises which threatens him such as when a woman outsmarts him in his own field advances to a higher position brings home a bigger paycheck or excels him in anything that requires ma masculine strength skill competence or ability so one of his needs in the, and you'll notice that too like um when you notice that men play women in sports you know they have a need to beat the woman and when the woman beats them they want to rematch they want to keep rematching until they win because they how dare they get beat by a woman you know and so it's not necessarily i'm uh, and i'm putting you down kind of thing but it's this manly masculine thought that we as women need to honor and realize that we don't need to be better than men in their roles we need to excel in our roles and competition between women small competition here and there is friendly and cute and everything um, but we don't we need to realize that we as women don't need to compete with each other um, and we don't need to compete with men either so failures in society so unfortunately we see these principles violated so the basic principles traditions and the, the things that men need the masculine needs we see these things violated in our modern life so women have tip really invaded the man's world and you can see it today we have a generation of working moms competing with men for greater achievements the more honored positions or a bigger paycheck and at home it's just as bad the woman's taking control and trying to run things her way disappearing really is the trusting wife that looked to her husband for strong guidance and as a solid arm to lean on and while that arm is still there she's no longer leaning on it she's really using herself and leaning on herself she does many of the masculine chores herself um the independence of women is making masculine care and protection unnecessary and this is a loss to really both both male and female both masculine and feminine as the man is deprived of his masculine function he feels less needed and less masculine and as the woman assumes masculine burdens she takes on male characteristics to fit the job this means a loss of femininity for the woman and a loss of gentleness the male responsibility adds strain to her life more tension and worry this results in a loss of serenity, a quality very valuable if she's to succeed in her home. And when she spends her time and energy doing the man's work, she neglects important functions in her own role. And this results in a loss to the entire family. So to succeed well in, um, to succeed well in the mind of his masculine role, in the mind of the man, um, as the guide, provider, and protector, remember, he has to, if he's to be happy, he has to function, feel needed, and excel in his masculine role. So in order for him to be happy as a man, he needs to meet those three things. Let him lead the family. Let him do the masculine jobs around the house. Let him provide the living. 
Only in rare emergencies should you overstep his role and do his masculine work. And we're going to talk about that again in the next video. Um, as he functions in his masculine role, don't expect perfection from him. Don't scrutinize his performance to see if he's doing things right. If he neglects his duties and it causes you severe problems, and if it does not cause you severe problem, problems, sorry, that was a typo on my part, but if it doesn't cause you severe problems, don't complain. Instead, let him know that you have a problem, state clearly your problem and the trouble that it's caused, and then ask, how do you think I should handle it? And this honors him as the leader, it puts the problem on his shoulders, and it helps him to actually feel needed. So if he continues to fail in his duty, be patient with him. Patience is a virtue, ladies. Be patient with him because change comes slowly. Just like you would expect him to be patient with you if you decide to take, you know, homemaking very seriously or anything, um, or, you know, even being a mother in general. If you expect somebody else to be patient with you, you have to be patient with them in their role as well. You can't expect him to just get it all of a sudden, especially if you're going from the typical feminist feminist household to where the woman is equal as far as equal doing equal chores and duties and work you can't expect him to just get it immediately it's going to take time a lot of the men have been raised in this feminist society and so they kind of expect that from you and so when you switch and try to be more traditional it takes them time to get used to it so you have to be patient um, so to further succeed offer him appreciation a man's roles is not an easy one and that's something that we're going to learn. His greatest reward is your appreciation for his daily efforts. Be lavish in your appreciation. It may mean more to him than his paycheck. And last, be faithful to perform your duties. This more sharply defines the roles between the two of you and helps him to succeed in his. And so quickly, we're going to talk about blurring the roles between man and female and we're gonna end it there. So when a man and woman's roles are not distinctly divided, it's called a blurring of roles. In this case, the woman does part of the man's work and he does part of hers. When this arrangement is temporary, it's not a problem, but if it becomes a lifestyle, it becomes injurious to the family. I'm living proof of that. So when me and my husband were dating and we were living together, well, we were engaged at the time, um, we split everything so you know one week he would clean the bathroom one week i would and same thing with dishes and cooking it well he didn't really cook but mostly i would order food because i got tired of cooking because we were splitting everything and i was working two jobs at the time while he was working um and going to school and so you know it became really really stressful i became a very angry person very depressed um i wasn't happy i felt like i was i was literally miserable i hated working um, I hated the drain and strain that it felt on me and then whenever he would do things like cleaning stuff around the house I would really kind of scrutinize what he did I would basically tell him he didn't do it right you know and that I'll do it and blah 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 so I'm definitely living proof and I've experienced that firsthand myself it started out really nice you know oh it's nice he's washing the dishes oh it's nice I don't have to clean the bathroom this weekend or whatever the case was but as time went on I found it really did not work very well for either of us um, and so seeing how we work now, I literally take care of everything in the house. My husband rarely washes a dish and he doesn't have to because I'll do it. And I actually enjoy doing it and I don't have to worry about, oh, he didn't put the dish in the right spot. Um, he didn't put it back right. He didn't wash this right. He left food on it or, you know, I don't have to worry about that. Or even with cleaning the bathroom, I don't have to worry about him using the wrong cleaning product or, you know, things that I would notice because it's not how I would do it. And so I'm able to run the household the way that I want to because that's my duty and he's able to worry about the things that he worries about, whether that's him working or that's him taking care of his car or, you know, whatever it is that he decides that he wants to worry about how we spend our money and things like that. And so I definitely feel a full sense of freedom now compared to what I felt before just because we changed the way that we did our roles and we started honoring, honoring Yahuwah's division of labor. We started honoring his divine order of things. Um, so if children are to develop their sexual nature, they need strong masculine and feminine images to pattern from. The mother demonstrates the feminine image when she functions in her feminine role as she moves about the house in feminine clothes, tending to her domestic work, 
caring for her children and nursing her baby, she provides this image. And if she also indicates that she's very content and happy with her role, she gives the children a positive picture of femininity. And on the other hand, with the man, when he functions in his role as a strong leader, protector, and guider, when his children are given the opportunity to actually see him in action once in a while and see that he willingly assumes his position of being the masculine man um, and enjoys it, he provides them with a very positive masculine image. And with this distinct masculine and feminine image in the home, you have women and men that can grow up to be masculine and feminine um, men and women, you know, going from girls and boys. And so when you have that blurring of the roles, it actually can lead to problems like, honestly, this may offend some people, but homosexuality. So homosexuality is traced to homes where you don't have a very good um, distinction between the roles. The girls and the boys from these homes have not had a sexual image to pattern from. And we also know, you know, that homosexuality does, does um, stem from also things like, you know, sexual abuse and molestation and things like that. But you also have to realize that if you don't have those two distinct roles in the home, the child's going to kind of grow up without seeing those things. And so they're going to just take on whatever they feel like they like best or whatever they do see most in the home. So a lot of times, especially if you have a single mother, I know it's really, really tough. Um, I see it with the single moms that I'm surrounded with, um, but you have to realize that you can't treat your son like you would treat a girl. You have to teach him to be masculine, otherwise he's gonna grow up being very feminine and potentially going, going to the other side and becoming homosexual because I truly believe that you're not born homosexual, um, it is a choice and a lot of times it stems from how you are raised and what you go through growing up. Um, so I know I went on a little tangent there, that's why I always have my notes, but I do want to just share that and sharing that out of love, not sharing that out of judgment of anybody. You know, I'm not going to judge you for what lifestyle you decide to live, but I will let you know that it is wrong in Yahweh's eyes and that if we were to stick to his divine order of things and we were to um, really fulfill those roles that he's given us, we would have a lot less of that in the world beyond the fact that there's just sin in the world in general so it's bound to happen um but anyways um not having those images to pattern from denies them normal sexual development so when we think of all the things children need to learn as they grow up and what we need to teach them if they are to become normal successful happy human beings nothing's more important than a boy becoming a masculine man and a girl becoming a feminine woman many women um Oh, so that's the end of that. <laughs> I always forget I have different topics. So the last thing, okay, so I said the last thing was going to be blurring of the roles, but this is really the last topic. We're going to talk about really is it fair? Are the roles fair? So many women who are up to their necks in domestic work tied to the 16-hour routine of caring for the children and, and fulfilling their roles, they actually challenge this whole concept of having these roles. They claim that it's not fair because women must work harder and longer hours than the men. But there's something that actually we haven't thought of and when it was brought to my attention, I was like, you know what? I've never seen it that way, but now I do. So therefore, um, women tend to claim men don't have a right to come home and relax when the wife keeps working. They mean, um, they say they should help more with the housework and especially with the care of children. And while this might seem fair on the surface, there's another viewpoint. A woman's role, as difficult as it is, typically lasts about 20 years. Even if she's had a large family, 20 years will see her through most of it. Then her life takes a turn. She begins to have a lot more freedom and plenty of time. But the man's responsibility to provide for his household never ends. It lasts a lifetime. Even if he's fortunate enough to retire, he's never completely free from that feeling and responsibility of providing an income. So yes, when you begin to see it this way, the division of work for the man and the woman is completely fair. So it's almost like that idea of you're going to work really hard for a little while so you can enjoy the rest of your life versus somebody who works a little bit every day. Um, it ends up adding to the same amount of work. It's just somebody did it in a shorter amount of time versus somebody extending it over a period of time. It's the same thing with the female and male roles. You know, the man constantly worries about these things his whole life, while the woman is really kind of focused on these things for a shorter amount of time. And then while her children, you know, are older and adults, yes, she'll still have those worries, but it'll be a lot less than when she was actually raising the children. <clears throat> 
So I suggest you keep this in mind, this whole idea of the 20 year span. Do your work willingly and don't expect too much of your husband. Instead of complaining because he doesn't help you more, keep your marriage intact and cultivate romantic feelings. If you do, your marriage will be filled with plenty of golden years. So is the man's role when it comes to fairness, is his role more important then? No. Think of the impact a wife and a mother has on her husband and children. Her influence never ends. The greatest service a woman can give to humanity is to be a wonderful wife, mother, and homemaker. However, our world would have us believe otherwise and that thinking that working um, away from the home in some sort of career or job is more important than giving the best of ourselves to our families and having time left over for personal development. Many, if not most, jobs or careers are repetitive, competitive, and disheartening, unlike the joyful um, feeling that we get from these feminine roles. Many women today experience an overwhelming number of expectations. Um, where, where am I going with this? Actually, no. You know what? I'm going to end it there. We're going to talk about the feminine roles in the next video because I don't want this video to get too, too long. So with that, um, I'm going to end it today my sisters a co team my sister um we're gonna talk tomorrow about the feminine role so where there's four roles and we're gonna which we talked about in the beginning of this video but we're gonna go deeper into them in the next video and we're gonna talk about the um pros and cons of being a stay-at-home wife versus a work away at home a work away home wife <laughs> and we're gonna really talk about the times when you should work out of the home and when you shouldn't and um, even things like being self-employed and all of that stuff. So that's going to be the next video. So I'm going to end it here and I'm going to tell you to just keep seeking the truth as far as femininity. You know, there's not a huge amount of verses in the Bible that talks about being a woman, but there are very clear cut ones that we have that we can follow. And of course, we have the many, many examples. And this is something I plan to do once we kind of finish this womanhood series is going through biblical examples in the in the actual word and in the actual manuscript that we have been given of women who fulfill their feminine roles perfectly. So um, look out for that after this little series is done. But I'm really, really excited and I've been hearing a lot of good feedback from you ladies about how this is really kind of changing your thought when it comes to being a feminine woman. So I'm really excited. I know that this has completely changed the way that I live my life as a feminine woman, as a woman in general. Um, and so I just hope that it continues to change yours. With that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.